Guys, just finished a wonderful Sunday night dinner and I thought I'd sneak down to the lab for a couple minutes and get a few things done. Reinstalling Raspbian on my uh, Pi display system that I have here. This is the, the, the Kitchen Pi project you saw in a previous video, but unfortunately I keep having the SD cards get corrupted. Does anyone else have this problem on their Pis when there's even so much as a slight disturbance, the SD card gets corrupted and she's game over. So I'm reinstalling noobs here. This is really, really easy. You just copy noobs over to the SD card, throw it in the machine and hit go. Got the i3 Mega ready to go. I'm gonna fire up a print. This one's a funny one. Uh, we needed a uh, little trophy, a toilet trophy for a guy at work this summer. So I said, hey, I'll 3D print that. So with the i3, there's nothing to it. Don't do anything with the bed. I don't just hit go and hit print with this ultra base uh, print surface. It's, it's just great. So I'll hit this and this will be uh, about 11 hour print on this one. It's pretty slow and we're printing it in flexible TPU from SaneSmart. I uh, really like this stuff. I've had no problems with it. It's working quite beautifully. I think we'll change that out for a uh, blue uh, TPU filament for the next project and see how that goes. It's going to be for one of these quadcopters in the background over here. Uh, if not, maybe a brand new one if we haven't even already started it yet. Maybe you guys have already seen it. Maybe a little sneak peek. I've also got this na nano talon ready to go here. Um, let's just see. Have you seen what this looks like assembled? Let's give it a look. And that's what it looks like. What a neat little bird, eh? This is going to be a fun little autonomous uh, drone slash, well, just FPV plane. We're going to put the FPV camera down in the front there. And we're going to go ahead and get the F4 flight control put in here. I'm not going to start it tonight, I don't think. So I think it's a little beyond what I have time for tonight. But I do have a 3D printed mount already made for the F4 flight control. So we'll go ahead and get all that kind of retrofitted, but this is going to be what it's going to look like. Kind of neat. First layer going down perfectly. The trick to doing TPU or any flexible filament is go super slow. On the i3 and the CR10, I use half the speed that I normally would for a 3D print. And it may seem tedious, but this is how to get the results. Nice and slow and steady wins the race. print came out pretty good. Overall, I think it was a success. Again, I love this ultra base. See how easy that comes off the print bed? Pretty cool. So for those not familiar, this is a support material all around the outside and you just have to peel it off. Uh, because we had so much overhang on the tank and stuff here, you just have to get that off of there and it should come off super, super easy. And we just got to trim this up. Usually I just use a pair of side cutters. But Overall, <laughs> we have a 3D printed flexible toilet. <laughs> Crazy. Looks like I was successful on my Pi installation too. This is the, the I think I called it the Raspberry Pi Smart Kitchen or something. This is the interface that I have running in the background here. It just gives me the weather and scrolls through a bunch of YouTube videos and some, some top news and the time of day, all that kind of cool stuff. But uh, kind of an interesting tip. One of the harder things to do is to get a screensaver, get the screensaver disabled on Raspberry Pi. If you install X screensaver with that command, you will get this cool interface. You'll be able to not only configure a screensaver, but also disable it so that you don't have to deal with it anymore. Disable screensaver and we're done. That's it. No more screensaver. That's actually really hard to do on Raspberry Pi. It's something that took me a while to figure out. So if you're running a terminal like me, want to kill your screensaver, there you go. So the other day I was out at the local model field and one of the guys had a ESC wire get disconnected and needed to be resoldered. 
and I went to use my soldering iron, my little USB one that I've got, and I had forgot to bring a battery pack or anything to use it with. On top of that, my phone was nearly dead too. So I think I'll come up with a bit of a solution for that right now. plan is to take this buck converter that I've got here with a USB connection on it and we will simply add the XT60 connector and then we'll be able to power just about anything out of the field I want within reason of course we can't do um, really high amperage stuff while well, we could, but I think the boost converter isn't rated for crazy high amperage. I forget the rating on this. I think it's three or four amps anyway. Um, yeah, it's in 20, up to 26 volts out, 5 volt DC, but no amperage rating on it. So mm, I forget, but it'll be plenty good enough for soldering iron and charging my phone. And all kinds of handy things out at the field, I think. A little bit of solder. A little bit of tinning action. We'll go ahead and tin these up real good because we're gonna need lots of solder on the XT60s. It's really hard to do from behind a camera, but eh, it'll do the job. Perfect. And we'll gob on some on the XT60 connector. Pretty much just need a big goober of it. Now, it is hard to heat up an XT60 if your iron is kind of weak. Mine is not, so it doesn't have too much trouble. Now, if you have yourself some heat shrink, well, that makes the rest of the job real nice and easy. So we'll go ahead, we can take off a pretty good sized chunk and we can run it right up, right up the throat quite a little bit. Actually, that's a tiny bit too much. It's gonna shrink down a little bit, but let's go right up the XT60 and we'll shrink it down. should be able to just plug our lipo in and get a voltage on there with any luck and now I should be able to charge my phone with any luck as well ha <laughs> ha look at that perfect and now I can use my little USB soldering iron little tip if you haven't done so before Always wrap some solder around the cords of all of your irons, even your bench iron, because sometimes you'll take it off site for whatever reason, and inevitably you'll find yourself that you forgot your solder. This way, no matter what, you can get a small job done. Perfect. Perfect. 